Yo, let's, let's fucking go. go. All right, Tosh, let's start with recapping this EVOK trade, man. So go into the watch list and look at the plan for EVOK. Let's do it, buddy. All right, watch list. Guys, this is what you should do every single morning. This is the first step, like I just said. Read this shit. Alex, you want to you give them your thoughts? Yeah, just read it off and then I'll go over it. Okay, guys, so support at 3.30. Here, I'll even draw a line. Just we'll do this as easy as possible for you guys. So let's draw a line at 3.30. And you have to remember, guys, before VWAP set up and it's all picture perfect like this, he's giving the watch list like, like this. This is all the only shit that he sees. Yep. So you guys have to understand this is real-time stuff. So, but we'll draw the line. Uh, support at 3.30, waiting for that line to break, and then we'll short a bounce. Do not, do not, he's screaming at you right here, do not anticipate. Very important. Yep. So put on a one minute chart because it's a lot easier on the one minute chart. Uh, oh, sure, man. Yeah. I'll have to hold on one second, buddy. I'll, how do I do this again? Ah, oh, fuck. I'm trying to think. Oh, hold on one second. I, I never have one minutes. Oh, I do. Get out. Nice. Got it. So right at the open, Tosh, if you zoom into right at the open, it washed out to 330, broke that level, and then rebounded to VWAP. Is that 932 candle? It washed out and rebounded to VWAP and failed. And that was basically the trade, bro. That was literally the trade is it broke 330. It bounced to 250s, 240s, 250s, whatever that VWAP level was. And then it just cracked pretty much all day, man. Dude, it, it's literally exactly what you said, man. Wait for the breakdown. Do not anticipate. So when it cracks the support, guys, you have to understand here, I'm going to draw this out for you. We've been doing this a long time. You just have to eyeball it at this point. Where's like, like follow support. Where's support? Where do you see the, the shaded area for those who are new to trading is what's called pre-market. So this is before a bunch of retail hops in intraday. Most retail is intraday, you know, uh, but this pre-market stuff, guys, it's setting up for the day on the most important levels that you should be paying attention to. So when this breaks, exactly as Alex's watch list said, what do you think he's going to do? He's going to follow down a broken stock, not chase shorting correctly based on the confirmation that exactly was, bro what i did is i mentioned i mentioned in the room that i was covering around like 308 so what i did is i covered a pretty decent chunk of it around 308 on that dip and yep. i said i'm waiting for a bounce to view app. let me actually see if i could find that mess up i said i'm waiting for a bounce to view app on edok to reshort and that's what we got bro Dude, a seventeen thousand dollar day is nothing to joke about. <laughs> like, let's be honest. Let me see if I can find that exact message. I got to Wait, wait, wait! Back. This guy, dude, this guy is the best comment I've heard all week. I think crypto backies are revenge trade small caps. Exactly. Well, that is hysterical, man. Here, I found the message. Oh shit, that's funny. Nice, nice. Okay, I'm expecting, uh, guys. This is the message. So he went back. I'm expecting a VWAP push on EVOC to stop out those who chase lows where I was covering. And you can see the timestamp at 7.05. And that's exactly where I was shorting it from. And so I'm going to ask, support was 3.20, but you scaled on the bounce of 3.20. Were you worried that I would reclaim a trap? What, when was that? What, um, what, what, do you have a time What are you talking about, buddy? Because from what I see, the support was 3.30, not 3.20. Above 3.20 to 3.50. Basically, my plan was, bro, just to short the bounce. So as soon as that breaks, like as soon as the... So if it was above 3.20, how'd you know it was reclaiming? So 3.20 was not the line. 3.30 was the line, as mentioned. Yep. And basically, my thought process on that was 3.30 is the support from pre-market. Also, this stock was being pumped. So not only was it... Um, not only was the stock being pumped, okay, I was looking for some sort of rejection. So what happens, guys, is this. There's a lot of stocks every single morning that get pumped up and down. That's totally normal. That's totally fine. It's going to happen every single day. What I like to do is I like to wait and see if the pump is going to fail or if the pump is going to hold. In the case of EVOK, it was so heavily pumped. The pumpers were buying this stock at 390 and 380. So my thought process is if they're buying it at 390 and 380 and it breaks support at 330, they are going to be underwater because the move was artificial. So because the move was artificial, that told me that if this thing fails and bounces, that every single person that bought for that pump is underwater yeah. and is going to be selling. So the reason why this was my favorite one of the day is because it was an aggressive pump that failed. So keyword failed. Why did it fail? 330 support. Yep. 
Yeah, and, and, and not just fail, guys. It didn't just trickle down. Look at the rejection on this candle, man. Like through that line, like, dude, that's 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 a big confirmation. That's like people fucking bailed at VWAP, dude. And I'll, yeah. I, I think I'm on a one minute. I covered a metric shitload, dude, on the fucking weakness like, too. Like, like this is this is why I like personally. I know Alex likes the three minute guys, the, the, or the one minute. I like the three minute because I think it's so much clearer to see. But if you are a one minute trader, you can still see. Look how thick this break is dude this yeah this is my favorite this is my favorite stock of the day because here, here i don't want to give away too many fucking secrets well bro. this is why i like i'm showing you guys exactly why i like three minute charts see how much more bearish that looks than on the one minute look at that break i'm like, gonna tell you guys a secret i'm gonna tell it. you guys a secret and maybe i'm not even gonna post this webinar online is the pumpers are very fickle guys they're very fickle so what that means is if they have a pump and the pump doesn't work out they're on to the next one and when they are on to the next one, you better believe that every single person that bought that pump is underwater. And when those motherfuckers are underwater, you see what happens, man. That's just, that's easy money for me. So I'm just looking for those easy money trades every single day. And that's what I base my entire career on. Hey, if they have a pump, if they want to push it, if they want to do X, Y, Z, fuck yeah. it, motherfuckers. I don't give a shit better for me. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. <laughs> I am a Tosh three minute chart convert. One part is getting consistent, more selective. Yeah, man. You know, it takes time. It takes time, right? Like you just have to, again, as Alex just said, when the trade is basically slapping you in the face, guys, like, dude, this is the confirmation like this. It, now you get in. Those are the only trades you should take in the beginning. You shouldn't trade things you don't know. This one was like a slap in the face on that support break. And then you hit a pop. And then be, because the cool thing about this is like, because this is such good confirmation of a breakdown, a rejected VWAP and a crack of support. So that's literally like a trifecta, like bing, bing, bing. That's a coupling factor. Anything you short under VWAP guys, you can actually just risk VWAP if you, if you want, because that's a big rejection. And, and notice me and Joe talk about this all the goddamn time, man. Has this played ping pong with VWAP at all? Literally like, so, so you're, you're giving an hour right here of not really the only VWAP test it does is that one time and it was a massive rejection in the morning. So what do you think is going to happen on the next pops up once it does clarification of that and it hasn't touched VWAP in a really long time? And the one time it did, it rejects. You have a much safer short. And if it does rip through VWAP, that's why we have stops. That's why we do max loss on the and day. And the thing is, guys, anything can happen. But look at the daily chart on Evo. I mean, yep. oh, I feel so bad, bro, giving away the shit, bro. But like, no, no, Alex. So yeah, we, dude, if anything, we'll just make this for the members today. We don't have to publish this one. Bro, EV okay. If you look at the daily chart, I don't think yours is, well, mine is adjusted. So let me, let me. Oh, pull yeah, you. mine's not adjusted yet. Let me pull you an example of mine, Tosh. So yeah. I'll show you. EV okay. Okay, two. okay, so pull up this chart I just put in the webinars channel, Tosh. Let's see. <laughs> Holy Look shit. the last motherfucking time it ran, guys. Last time it ran, <laughs> it tanked all day long. Like, come on. Yeah, like, I made, when I first started trading, guys, this is when I was broke, okay? And broke for me is like, I didn't have, like, I didn't even have, like, a $10,000 account, okay? And what I did, guys, what I did is I literally only shorted stocks that had daily charts like this. I wanted to only short stocks that had daily charts like this because that to me was an edge that not many people do. We call them needle dicks. They're just up and then down. <laughs> and they're just up and then down. It's like just a bunch of needles on a daily chart, man. Guys, if you that's, that's what I started my career on, man. That's what I started. And obviously those are few and far between these days because like now everyone's a fucking expert. But bro, l let me tell you something, Alex. I don't know if you want to rem reminisce for a second, but it's so funny. I've been trading with Alex for a long time, guys. And and before I really understood his process and Bao's process, you know, because they, they had hit it so much before I did. I was like, I was I, Alex would mentor me a little bit. And I was like, dude, what do you think about this in the morning? So we were in a room together back then, just a couple of friends, you know, we were just talking and it was like 10 people. And I'd be in the morning like, Alex, what do you think about this? He goes, dude, does it look like a needle dick? Like check the daily. And it didn't. And I'll be like, oh yeah, duh. Like it's, he keeps it that simple, bro. That's we, how it was when I first started guys. When I first I started, I was so fucking selective with my trades because I was fucking broke, dude. I had no money. I don't, you don't I can't have time, you don't have shit, time to venture out from, from the easiest setups. You don't have the luxury to do that yet. Yeah. So that's kind of where I was guys. And those are what I look for. And when I saw an example like EBOK, where it was like that and it was pumped and there was a new hot chick of the day, 
I mean, fuck, bro. I, I was trying to bulldoze in, but at that point, like, it was just a matter of the borrows, you know? Alex, do you remember, do you have, like, um, a good example, bro, of, like, one of those daily charts that, like, we talk, that's just picture, I'm trying to think of one off my head that we can uh, actually pull up. Let me, like, show, I'm trying to think of something. Show people, like, a perfect example. Uh, maybe, like, I don't Look know. at something, um... Uh, I'm trying Maybe to think staff, of what staff S T A F. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That used to be one of my favorite ones. Yeah, yeah. Look at staff, Tosh. Look at staff. This is this is pretty good, guys. Every now, like they're not easy. zoom in, Tosh. Zoom in to like I don't know, 2016 time. 2016. Bro, I don't even know how to do that one, TD American. Um, here I'll show you an example. Oh, like, you, you, you are such a piece of shit. This is this is actually a good good example. Up, down, up, down, up, down. Uh, no, they can't see they can't see that here use use this because they got to zoom in to really see it look yeah and if anything guys because this is a daily with yeah check this out dude seriously these these are daily that's, so that's it look thing. at that that chart that chart guys was my religion i used to pray to this chart there's not much i believe in god i'm a religious guy but like fuck bro for everyone that doesn't believe in religion you could believe in this chart you know what i'm saying and that to me guys whenever i saw that chart whenever i saw a setup like that that was to me my opportunity to trade. So, so let's let's bring it back around, Alex. What what you were saying earlier with pumpers? What do you guys think is number one going to do on a stock where every time it runs it craters? What do you think is going to happen when you combine that with a pumper who pumps the stock and pumps his room and then goes squirrel and I'm over to the next stock and he leaves all his sheep to get dumped on a stock that was already going to get dumped on? What the fuck do you guys think is going to happen? Yo, Tosh, I don't want to talk about this topic anymore because I'm giving away too much shit. Let's save this for a webinar that you and me do by ourselves. Yeah, we'll do a trader clinic with that. Yeah, yeah. And someone asked what my size was today on EVOK. I think I was using like 20,000 shares. So like I used like a, almost like a $60,000 position to make to a 16,000. So what is that? 16 divided by 16. Odd, man. So I like... Was that 25% return? I, I'm not, I don't know, something like that. But that's boys good. didn't really take much money. Obviously, 60,000 may seem like a lot, but hey, even if you use fucking 10,000, you can still make 2,500. Dude, that's it, man. That's it. You guys have any questions on anything we just talked about? We are, this is a free webinar, so we're going to try to not give away everything. Yeah, I feel I don't want to give away too much shit, bro. I mean, it's, it's you know, it, it doesn't really matter that I give away too much shit because all you people that are here, like most of you guys don't even listen to what I say. So, like, it is what it is. <laughs> Bro, I was going to say, it's like, look at this. Look at this rip. What the hell just happened? Dude. And of course, Bitcoin's following a little bit. What the hell? Let's see if this the, holds, man. Let's the go. That they're not, probably not going to raise 75 basis points again. Thank God. <laughs> Bring my tech account back up, baby. <laughs> Guys, any questions? Any questions on anything we've talked about so far? The rip before the slam, probably. Um, yeah, no, I don't, I don't really have. I mean, we could take some questions, but like, maybe why don't we take a question on AERC today? So something about oh, AERC yeah. today. Let, let let me let me kind of elaborate on that, right? So actually, before I start that, let me let me actually mention. I got a DM today from a member, and a member said that they're kind of struggling for the last two days, and you know, I asked him like, what's going on? Like, what can I do to help? So what I found out, or what he mentioned, is that he has been getting chopped up because there's been so much range on the stocks. If you look at these stocks like RDBX, AERC, they're moving sometimes five to $10 a day. And what this specific member was saying is that the range chopping him up. So when these stocks are extremely volatile, when these stocks have extreme amounts of range, the way to combat that guys is to size down. And by sizing down, you allow yourself to leave more room for the range. So if you find yourself struggling in this market and you find yourself, you know, getting chopped up on the range or whatever it may be, chances are you might be a little bit oversized, drop your size a little bit and try to adapt and adjust the range by using less size. So a lot of people think that the only way to make money trading is to just size up, size up, size up. But the reality is the less size you use, the more nimble you could be for a bigger picture trade. What ends up happening is if you're just so oversized, you fucking panic. You're like, oh my God, if this shit goes 10 cents against me, I'm down a thousand dollars. I'm fucked this, that. But if you're, you know, sizing down and you're allowing the stock to trade range, instead of panic covering when this trade goes your way, 10, 20 cents, all of a sudden you're holding for a dollar because you're sitting back and relaxing because you're not risking too much. 
So sizing down and be able to account for the range is a great way to trade these markets. 100%. Dubao has been saying that for 10 years, guys, that I've been following him. Is, Trust me, I've been there. I've done it, guys. I've done it. Yeah. And when you're oversized, man, it's like the thing that sucks is when you oversize, man, it's like, let's go back to Evoc for a second, Alex. It's like, dude, you know the picture perfect play you want, right? Like, say you wait for the pop, you know, you wait for this breakdown, you hit this pop, or even you hit this one. But if you're oversized, you're going to stop out on this wick, or you're going to stop out on this wick. Guys, the oversizing is literally going to change all the brain chemistry of your confidence and the trade that you're in, that you're just not going to trade exactly the way you should trade based on if you were correctly sized or even undersized but when you're oversized man sometimes even the most textbook simplest plays you'll fuck up you'll butcher because yeah, you're not thinking about a pattern you're you thinking about money. if i used half of my size i would have made double probably and that that is very true because sometimes guys sometimes if you're oversized you're like oh my god if this thing goes 10 cents against me i'm dead and if you stop out and all of a sudden it crashes a dollar and you're like wait what the fuck mm -hmm. because you're oversized Bro, every time I've oversized over the last nine years, let me tell you something. I stop out too quick and I don't let my winners run. It's it, it, because my brain's telling me I'm in fucking trouble. This is not rocket science, guys. If you size correctly, you trade correctly. You oversize, you are not thinking clearly. It's as simple as that. You're going to take the money too quick and you're going to cut too quick. So, you know, that's or or you're just going to be an idiot with no stops, then blow up because you have that deer in the headlights kind of thing. So there's always that as well. That's Gosh, always something. A sec. I got to take an emergency phone call. So I'll be back in a minute. Do it, brother. Do it. Um, yeah, guys, I man, I got to tell you, man, sizing correctly is so important. And the reason why it's so important in the beginning, guys, is I learned this. Oh, my God, man. Six years ago is is it's all about laying the foundational bricks in the beginning the correct way so that your mental state is always in a point of clarity and then going on it, it, it's like you start with um what, what could be a good analogy like you start with like a butter knife right and then as you go on you just slowly like craft it or a log of wood into a professional knife or like a jabbing spear but but in the beginning it's a blunt blade like you guys have to shape it correctly but if you try to start with a freaking machete you might turn that machete into a blunt blade like it's it's really, there's so many, like, like, dude, Julian Soul just said it on YouTube, man. Alex being redundant and still nobody listens. Guys, we say the same thing every webinar for five years. Like, literally, what have we not repeated on this webinar, last week's webinar, the two webinars before? Um, this stuff is not rocket science. It's discipline. It's pattern recognition. Uh, it's process. And then it's protecting your ass at the one time that you know, nine times out of 10, a trade works. The one time it doesn't, you get out. You get out and you protect your capital. Last week, I, I don't know if you guys remember, I think it was last week or two weeks ago, Alex came on as well on that webinar. And guess what? Something death candled massively and nine times out of 10, it works. It didn't work that time. He stopped out real time. You guys saw it in action. And then he got in long and then it dumped. So he lost twice. But here's the thing, on that trade, nine times out of 10, it works. So the one time it doesn't, you stop out. It's as simple as that. So- I think that when you guys are trading, the, the best probably thing I've ever taught in five years is the point of consistency and discipline and not overextending yourself, whether it be size or as, you know, Stephen just said, greed, that's a, that's a real big inhibitor to success in the sense that, you know, the guys that make $400 a day are not happy with that. And they go, fuck that. I want to make 800. Bow's making four grand a day. Why can't I? And then you try to, you know, rush the process. And now you're, now you're taking L after L and you're like, you're actually a good trader. You just got greedy and you need to bring it back to process. You need to bring it back to humility and bring it back to, you know what, man, I'm not ready for 4k a day yet. Let me get to 500. Let me get to 700. Let me get to 1200. Everybody remembers their first hundred dollar day, their first thousand dollar day, and then their first $4,000 day. It's the way it goes. But if you're a hundred dollar a day trader trying to go to a $4,000 a day, you, dude, you're gonna you're going to mess up your mind so quickly. It's like, oh my god, man. It, oh my god. You know, it's just like anything, right? It's like the first time you talk to a girl, you're scared as hell, and now you can probably go to a bar and pick up a girl after a couple bars anytime you want. Like it, 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 things get easier over time and repetition, but it's all about process. <laughs> Congratulations, you played yourself. Another one, but um, 
yeah, so waiting for the breakdown, waiting for the confirmation, waiting for the clarification that, okay, trend is broken. Let me follow it down and set a stop. Or this stock, you know, is over VWAP all day. Maybe I don't touch this. You know, AERC today, guys, I hate days like this where it's like day five and day six. I don't, I don't like things like this. But just to give you an example for intraday without, you know, without previous history, what did this do all day? If you're shorting this, thinking that you can bully this stock because it's beaten, guys, it's over VWAP all day. And now we have serious deviation. So this is the this is the shit that you have to pay attention to. This is the trend intact. Hey, it's over VWAP from the first candle of the day. You you see what I'm saying? So like whether it was you know green the two days prior or whatever, it does, I'm saying look at the intraday. If you're fighting trend, you deserve to lose. It's as simple as that, man. And if you're not, you know that's another case scenario. But this is basically the inverse of you know trying to bully a broken stock on the long side or trying to short a stock on the upside is wow, I'm playing really counter trend. And people that play counter trend, you know, have a really hard time. And I'm not talking about. Uh, counterintuitive thinking of something like, um, you know, EVOC today and tomorrow's a broken stock and then it bounces. It's not that you're playing counter trend. The trend's broken over the two days. So this is day one. Tomorrow. Sorry, I'm back. Sorry. I had to. Yeah, no, no problem, buddy. I, I was basically talking, Alex, I was basically talking about playing counter trend and how dangerous it is, dangerous it is. Like, look at all the warning signs of AERC today being over VWAP and deviated. And yeah. So that's kind of that's kind of what I was talking about. It's hard, bro. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, it's, the the market's not easy right now, right? Anyone that tells you the market's easy right now is fucking full of shit. Market's the hardest it's been in I don't know. I would say twenty fucking years. And it's the hardest is, market like, ever, dude. And the thing is, like, look, you know, not to brag, but we're fucking still green, which is good. But the thing is, like, it's in this type of market, guys. Your goal is not to make money. Your goal is to stay alive because what follows a bull mark I and mean, what follows a bear market bear market is always a bull market so your job is to stay fucking alive and wait for the easy setups to come and pretty much today was an easy setup on evok if i had an evok every single day i'd probably be a billionaire by now <laughs> dude no doubt there boy no doubt there i'd be a billionaire but so would the fucking feds because they take half of it oh my god man yeah so you wouldn't be a billionaire and you know that reminds me. one more thing tosh pull up the slide about the lifetime membership but not a lot of people know this guys the lifetime membership at mic is tax deductible tax deductible means that if you made let's say the lifetime membership is a thousand dollars right it's not a thousand dollars but let's say it was a thousand dollars so let's say you made ten thousand dollars trading and the lifetime membership was actually let's change it a lifetime membership is 10,000 and you made 10,000 trading. If you made 10,000 trading, you would have to send the feds probably $3,000 in taxes. Yep. But if you made 10,000 trading and you pay $10,000 for a lifetime membership, all of a sudden you get the education and you pay the feds zero. So if you guys don't already know, or if you're on the fence, MIC's education is tax deductible and it is almost a no brainer to deduct it from your taxes. All you need is a receipt. That's it. So if you're having a great year trading, deduct it from your taxes. If you're having a bad year trading, add more deductions. You know. And let me add to this, Alex. It's it's a mind thing, guys. You're telling yourself now, man, I gotta I gotta pay X amount of thousands of dollars for a lifetime. I mean, I want lifetime, but it's expensive. Oh my god. You guys have to think long term. It's it's like what I said. It's like okay, I have to get on a reoccurring monthly or annual or you know whatever for for MIC guys. If you do the math between broker commissions, you don't need a scanner. You get a watch list. It's tax. I'm telling you, it's free. So now you're taking it to the next level of people don't think about this stuff because they don't think big picture. This is just this is seeing the forest for the trees, man. This is not looking at oh I gotta you know I gotta pony up some cash right now. This is dude, you're going to save this from the IRS, which in a in a sense it doesn't pay mic or the irs it goes back to you you were able yeah. to funnel into your and the thing is guys i don't know about you man but i'm gonna be trading until i fucking die bow is literally a psychopath and he's trading on the plane he's trading in the uber he's trading you want to learn from people that are going to be trading forever guys and we're going to be here forever so a lifetime membership is a no-brainer and i mean like it's I don't know. It's just, to me, guys, it, it just makes no sense. We're trying to help. You know, we're trying to do our job and, you know, the most committed people sign up for it. And if you want to sign up for it, no problem. If you don't want to sign up for it, no problem. We're still going to be here every single day trying to help our best, you know? And, and guys, if you have any questions with this, you know, just last plug of this, just, just DM me. I'm going to get on a call with each one of you to flush out. Um, obviously, every now and then, 
there's somebody that's been in since 2018 and they're still on the monthly or the annual, I'm going to give them a better deal. They've been in for four years. So it is a little bit case to case basis, but this is the biggest discount we've like done in two, three years, maybe ever. So just hit me up. If you have any questions, I will get on the phone with you to answer your DMs, but um, tax deductible guys find yep. every reason to write off. Someone on YouTube asked a question. Why do you think that A, E, oh. or C was a B minus first red day setup? Oh, B minus first red day setup because it was not extended enough. If you go to the daily chart, um, you know, before this crazy move happened, it didn't really, I mean, look, it went from, you know, seven to 18, which is a hundred percent. But if it went from seven to 18 to 35 to 40, and then did a first red day, that's an A plus first red day. So because it was not extended enough, I did not feel comfortable, um, you know, sizing in. If it was an A plus first red day, I would have bulldozed in, but I didn't see my bulldoze signal. So I did it. Jake, with first red day, think about inertia and gravity. Think about the higher something goes, the bigger it's going to fall. That, that's kind of the thinking with the first red day. So like Alex just said, if it was double than what it ran this, he, there might be alarm bells everywhere. Like, holy shit, this is really going to get smoked when it comes down. You Spot know? On, bro. Spot yeah. On. I, I mean, guys, you all remember, oh, fuck, dude, I'll pull up the daily chart. You guys remember when Tesla did, dude, remember when Tesla, like for the first time hit a thousand or something like that, Alex? Or like- Bro, that first red day, if I just went long, I could have retired. I mean, it was this one, right? Like it was, dude, it was- the, I don't need, I think it was even before that, bro. Let me see. I think it I'm was like, like dude, I'm having flashbacks. We made a lot of money on this. It was a really shit. long day, bro. It that was, was a really fun, fun day, man. But you guys have to understand, look at this. I don't remember Tasha's days. a while ago, but I yeah, mean. It was, it was something. That was an options trade too, bro. I fucked around with some options. I know you did, you son of a bitch. You didn't tell me. <laughs> I was like, I was like, you and Joe did what without me? I didn't know options back then. I didn't know shit though. Yeah, it might have been 2020. I don't remember. Joe was like, throw everything you have into this friction. <laughs> I probably have, bro. I probably have a fucking screenshot, bro. Yeah, of course you do, man. You made like freaking 200 grand on it or something. I just, you remember these fun days in, when you reminisce a little bit and you get like, now that was alarm bell signaling. I'm telling you, man, there's trades where, you know, it subtly shows you an edge. And then there's trades where it slaps you in the face and said, hey, dummy, you're an idiot if you don't trade this, like long or short. Oh, that was the day, man. Holy shit. Yeah, you had your, I think you had your E-trade back then in Cobra right here or something. That's crazy. 101,000, guys. Look at that. Crazy stuff. That was Tesla right there, 82 Gs. Awesome. That's so sick. Got to stomp on the pedal when the edge is there, man. Guys, do you have any uh, other questions about first red day? Because that was actually a really good question. Sometimes they're they're B they're B rated, and sometimes they're absolutely A plus, depending on how high they go, and how and how hard they slam red on the day that they actually do roll red. Uh, Alex, question A E R C has has less than five million float. Do you short low float stocks? Thanks. Yeah, I mean, look, if the setup is there, I'll short it. But like on something like AERC, like, you know, the difficult part is that float number. That's why you got to kind of just be a little bit careful. You know what I'm saying? That's why I didn't size them either is because shit, man, like, you never know what the hell could happen. Yep. The lower the float, guys, you always have to be a little bit more on edge and, and really pay attention. Obviously, if you're shorting a micro, like a one to three million float, which I actually don't even really ever recommend, especially when you're a new short seller, you have to be careful. So five is not far off from a micro float. So you have to have that in the back of your mind, size accordingly and know that, you know, that that volatility and range can truly come out of nowhere if, if, if the horsepower gets kicked in, you know, so you got to be careful, man. You got to take all these things into consideration. Flow, you know, dilution, all this stuff. Trend, volume, God, what, like, what else, man? Everything, seriously. There, there's not one, one size fits all. There's not one. God, how many times, Alex, have we actually shorted like a $2 million float and, and made a lot of money, but we were like, fuck, man, maybe we shouldn't have done that. Like that was dangerous. Yeah. I mean, look, guys, times have changed, right? You know, back in the day, you know, a two million float is not what it used to be today. But, you know, in terms of price action, I mean, price action is price action, whether it's a million float or a hundred million float. So yeah. as long as you understand price action, you can understand how to trade these stocks because the pattern, the pattern is what matters, you know? It's the pattern, man. 
It's the pattern. These are good questions, guys. Keep them up. These are great questions. This is good stuff. Anybody on YouTube looking in, and then anybody who's a member posting. Also, YouTube. one more thing, guys, is to keep in mind is this. I was talking to one of our members today about this, and I was like, this new member joined from XYZ chat room, and he was like, you know, my teacher made a lot of money in the bull market, but he's not making much money in a bear market. And I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like no bro. Shit. I'm like, bro, if you could only make money in a bull market, you're not going to fucking last. Right now, in a bear market, is when the real traders are prevailing. Is when the real traders are showing you what's possible. And hey, bro, like not to toot my own horn, but I'm still up fucking a million dollars in this bear market. So like, the reality is that if your teacher could only make money in a bull market, you are fucked because that means that you could only make money in a bull market, which means that you are not gonna last the test of time in the market. Well, let's be honest, Alex, any nutless monkey could have bought any big cap for the last three years and made a killing. People can't, dude, you can't just be a teacher, not know anything about trading and click buy. I mean, do we have to pull up Zoom stock, Peloton, Amazon, test anything? Guys, this is a bear market. It really separates people who are disciplined from people who are not disciplined. And people had a work ethic to learn. You cannot just press buy and hold and make a killing now. That was the last two years. You could buy almost anything in the big cap land and make a killing. Anything, even new IPOs, except Coinbase. <laughs> <laughs> Coinbase, for those who don't know, Coinbase, guys, you know, this is the biggest U.S. exchange for crypto. Uh, they IPO'd, you know, this last year. Look at this. Look at this, man. This was the, one of the only things that got slaughtered from day one. And unfortunately, I know a schmuck who's still got 400 shares in the 400s. So don't be that guy. And then Hood is another example, which is Robin Hood. So I don't know why they got so decimated. I mean, this is like, dude, Alex, could you have, who could have predicted this? Like this, like I thought these would get tossed, but not like this, man. I got no idea, bro. Bro, Robinhood opens up, or it opens up in, in, in like a couple of days is at 85. Now it's at $6. Jeez. That's crazy. Like that's crazy. Uh, although when you do factor in that most Robin Robin Hood, dude. Dude, most of Robin Hood's revenue. Well, Robin, Robin Hood's a fucking scam, bro. They're trying to their business model or their name is to take from the poor. I mean, to give to take from the rich and give to the poor, right? Robin Hood, the the hero, the character, the fictional yep. whatever is take from the rich and give to the poor. Robin Hood's model is take from the poor and give to the fucking rich. Scam. Seriously, dude. And I found out recently that they're dude, most of their revenue comes from Dogecoin transactions. Fuck them, bro. I was like, come on, man. Oh shit. It's crazy stuff, man. Um anyway, what, man. what is the difference between having a fantasy order and anticipating a move? Is it due to having the fantasy orders after made its confirmation? Good question. Alex, you want to start? Um so here's the thing, guys. If you, have a fantasy, if you have a fantasy order in, that means that you're basically, you have a plan for the stock, right? You have some sort of something. Something is telling you, all right, I did a little bit of research. And based on my research, it tells me that I should be putting an order here. Okay. Anticipating a stock means that you're literally, let's say EVOK is at 350. You're shorting at 350 saying, okay, I'm anticipating that 330 is going to break. That is, that's an anticipation trade. That's a gamble. That's a 50-50. But if you wait for it to break first and then short, right? If you wait for it to break, set a fantasy order and then short, that is a totally different scenario. Yep. And Alex here, let's draw it out a little bit. So let's say you're going in a day and now you're in pre-market. And as Alex said in his watch, this 3.30 is the line. So a massive break of this is going to be huge confirmation. Now let's say it didn't do that. And you wanted to scale these resistance points in pre-market outer lines. Now you have two options. So let me scroll out, guys. Let me scroll back in. Is Let me expand this. What you see now is let's go real time. Okay, I could have fantasy or set here risking high a day at you know 380, maybe scale upwards of four. Okay, they didn't fill. What's the second option if my fantasy orders that are sitting there don't fill? Boom, reactionary rejection. I'll be waiting on a limit order on the next pop. 
These are not fantasy orders down here. This is something you wait for. That's the confirmation. These are fantasy orders that A, one get filled or don't get filled. And then this is that confirmation to then sit on the pop and the limit orders to get the rebates there. So you have time to do so. So this is already preset. And then you're just waiting for this confirmation. Then you have time. Don't sporadically market order in and run and chase. You have time to do both. Does that make sense, guys? So that's the difference of what a reactionary versus a very, very pre-planned fantasy trade is. And you see Bao doing both all day, whether a stuff happens, a death candle happens, or he just, his fantasy order's filled because it made it up there, you know? And I'm just using this as an example because um, I can't think of anything else, but that's, you know, there's a lot of, there's one better example, example, guys. One more example is this. Bao is an incredible channel trader, right? Incredible. I am incredible. The worst, I'm the worst channel trader in fucking America, bro. So oh, like, dude, I'm, is, I'm probably worse than you on channel trading, too. The thing is, guys, like final works for you. Bao is a control freak, so Bao likes to trade every single stock. Whereas me, I'm less is more, baby. I want to do the more. least amount of work, the least amount of stress to make the most amount of money. Okay. Preach, that, baby. that is why I like to hone in on one or two stocks a day. Rather than trying to trade all fucking 15, my mental bandwidth is not like that. I can't do that, right? You have to think, would you rather have 10% of your focus on 10 different stocks or 50% focus on two stocks, you know? hundred. So don't be discouraged if you're a horrible channel trader. That's fine. You don't need to be a channel trader. Find what works best for you based on your personality. And then based on that is what you tailor your trading to. Dude, you couldn't have said anything better than that. And you know what, guys? Like, you have to understand, we're not poo pooing the channel trading by any means. Bal's just so good at it. Me and Alex are not, dude. Alex and I are not channel traders. I can't bro. do it. I can't. Okay, that doesn't mean I can't do it. I'm not going to make money trading. I make fucking millions of dollars not doing it. You know? If, but, if you, but if you're good at it, then fucking run with it, dude. You have to play to your strengths. It's like know your weaknesses, know your limitations, but obsess and inundate over your strengths. Dude, Bao is so good at trading eight different stocks at every single level at every minute of the day. I don't know how he does it, but he does it. Yeah. <laughs> he's not human. I mean, I think we've already clarified that. He trades better when he's drunk. I was on the phone with that, no, I, was on, I was on the phone with an annual member yesterday that actually upgraded to lifetime and he was like, bro, how does Bao trade 10 stocks at once? I said, he's not fucking human, dude. I said, that's number one. I said, number, <laughs> I said, number two. 20 years, guys. Come on. 20 <laughs> years. And he's like, he's like, he's like, wait a second, but Bao trades even better when he's drunk. I said, yep, but don't tell him. <laughs> Bao's been trading 20 years. He's practically himself a fucking algo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seriously. You have to play to your strengths, guys. Alex and our um, Alex and my strength personally are just pre-planning and hitting one to two a day. And if you just hit one a day, but you hit it really correctly, you can have an evoc, you know. And I'm not saying 16k. I'm saying you know relative to the size that you're putting on. But the point is consistency. The point is discipline. The point is waiting for that setup where you go, oh man, I make money on this. I don't lose when this shows up. And at the very small chance I do, set a stop. Set a stop. Yeah, exactly, dude. An, an insight into Bow's trading. <laughs> He's crazy. So, you know, I know Bao, but what? let's actually, dude, if I go back, I think Bao posted his chart today on, uh, what did he post? Didn't he post it? He's on, I think he's on every single pop. I bet he's still in this pop. I bet he just covered the wash at three. I know that fucker's on every pop. Let's see. Where, I, I saw it earlier. Hold on, Look, guys, we're going to find this. And guys, if you have any questions, um, yep, there we go. Dude, that's on every single pop. <laughs> so if that's the way you trade, that's the way you trade. That's his strength. And he's trading five other things all at once. <clears throat> See, they're trapping all day. If she traps once, she'll trap again. Let's take a look. Alex, what do you think? Well, this is this is 3 p.m. rule, guys. This is this is not, there's no short edge right now on something like this. What do you oh, think, Tosh? On SIDU, S-I-D-U. I mean, reclaimed VWAP, high volume, day one, SSR, no thank you. No, absolutely not. And specifically the last hour of the day, guys. So like, I know the volume is pretty light. And usually speaking, generally speaking, if something doesn't- and No, we should do, Tosh. We should do yeah. watches. If SIDU ramps, that'll take the money flow away from AERC. So we should have them both up side by side to show people examples of the money flow in real time. Because if SIDU ramps, in my opinion, I think AERC will tank. 
Well, and what's funny is it's already starting to. So really good call, man. Look at that. Look at that. It's already really starting to. Guys, money flow, man. It's like we said earlier with the pumpers. Hey, new shiny object, squirrel. And now everybody races to this. And people forget about this. <laughs> Alex, you called that real time, man. Seriously. I mean, bro, like it's almost, it's some, when you've been trading for long enough, guys, some of this shit becomes no brainer. And we well, talk just, about the money flow concept every single day, every single day. Yeah, a lot of a lot of people when it's your first year, guys, a lot of this is like, man, what the hell do I do? And, and I promise you, you can just eyeball stuff after you've been doing this long enough because it really does become second nature. Like speaking English, man, it's like you learn, you can barely speak a little bit. Now you can, yeah, now you're fluent and you could maybe even your second or third language. I think Alex speaks and like- keep in language. mind, bro, SIDU made his ramp to the high day and just fucking crater. I was, I was gonna say, this is very key right here. <laughs> you can do anything it wants. All I know is that when money flows from one stock to the other, It'll flow out of one and into another. Yeah. That's all I know, bro. That's all I need to know. Well, and the reason for that, guys, is the limited quantity of runners. So what do you see every single day when we play small caps? Maybe, you know, depending on market conditions, I'll just generalize this, but anywhere from two to six plays a day. So if every single person who isn't kind of an active trader, especially a day trader, is paying attention to six tickers, what do you think is going to happen when one just tanks? Everybody's going to go to the other five or the other one that has the new shiny object or the new movement or the new, hey, rumor this, rumor that. Like, it's very incestuous. This is not like big caps where there's 20,000 tickers. This is like, dude, there's like six. There's like four to six plays. So when one's tanking and everybody was like, ah, screw that one, on to the next, boom. And of course, in small caps, people can move markets and they know that. So all retail has to do is show up. You know what I mean? All they got to do is show up and they can really make a stock move, especially these pumpers, especially these chat rooms that pump this shit. Also, guys, keep in mind, June 22nd is when we're going to host our live trading. So that's where you get to see me and Bao trade live. We're going to make a watch list. We're going to have a Zoom webinar, et cetera, et cetera. So this is your opportunity, guys, to you know watch us trade live too. It's going to be open for all types of MIC members. So yep. But it's, which is also why, guys, we're stopping the promotion of this on the 21st. So please, 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 we will not be extending these links for the lifetime sale um, because of this event. So that, that's the full focus after this. So I'm closing all links, closing all pro, everything, because uh, 2022 is going to be the, or, or I'm sorry, June 22nd is going to be the shit, dude. It's going to be so much fun. And so, hey, we might not even make money. We might lose money on the day of the live trading. But hey, that's better too, because like sometimes, like, you know, seeing someone lose is more beneficial than seeing someone win because, you know, how we handle the losing days, you know, kind of what defines us as traders. So I welcome a winning day. I welcome a losing day. I welcome any type of day that's going to come. Because the takeaway from events like that, guys, on June 22nd is not, hey, let's see if Alex made money that day. The takeaway is let me see how Alex does process so I can complement this every single day. I want to be a trader for the rest of time. Not let me make money one day. How does he do this in a nutshell for, for everything? So if he stops out, that's part of the process. And uh, what I was going to say is, remember I just drew that line about three minutes ago? This is usually the line at the 40% mark where if it careens through, you get a real run. It's volume. It's 40% of the morning levels. And I don't usually like count for this high. It's 35 to 40% of the morning levels. When this breaks, now shorts are really in trouble because that's decent. That's a decent amount of volume coming back in. So let's see what this does. This could keep, really keep running. Let it do whatever the fuck it wants, man. Don't matter. Literally. Let it don't do what it wants. Matter. We are not a part of this. Just watching for the concept. We just want to see if the concept is going to work, right? Yep. Oh, uh, I think we have a question. Sorry, guys, if I skipped over any. Uh, a question asked, for borrowing, do you wait for the setup to form and then you borrow or before market opens? Thanks. I've talked about this so many times, man. Um, basically, like, depending on the stock, right? So if it's a day one runner where the borrows are a lot less in supply, I locate as much as I can early in the morning because I am I know what I'm doing, right? But for you guys, you guys might not know how much size to get. So you end up wasting locate. So for you guys, I would suggest locating starters of the shares or the stocks that you want to trade. And then if you need more, get more. But to be honest, a lot of you guys should not be trading day one stocks. Day one stocks, the borrows run out very quickly. But day two, day three, borrows in it are in abundance. 
So if you're trading a day two, day three stock, borrows will be available all day long. So take a starter and get more. If you're trading a day one stock, you probably shouldn't be trading it. But if you do, those borrows will run out. So try to locate maybe a starter or half size. Hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah. Perfectly said. I think we have a fucking video on this, bro. Let me just ask No, there, there, there's a real art between borrowing, man. I remember when I was new, I was like, I have no idea how much I want to borrow, when I should do it. Guys, as, as soon as you find you have an edge and you're going to trade something, you just know, you see the edge, you see that you're going to trade it. Get the problem is a lot of you guys don't know what your edge is yet. Like, right. You guys don't know what your ed edge is yet. And until you know your edge, you shouldn't be doing it. But okay. here are two videos from our moderators to answer that question specifically. Watch these videos, guys. They're very important. But as soon as, see, see what I say, man, when it cracks that 40% mark in volume, shorts are really in trouble and it's a high day break. So compliment both of those on a coupling factor. If you long here though, you're a chasing bastard and I don't recommend. <laughs> so don't build that habits, idiots, buying at 384, thinking it could go to 420. Don't do that. That's never a good idea. You look, at, look at this run, man. Sometimes the harder they up, the harder they fall. Do not be a chaser, guys. Be careful. Um, even if there is a long edge right now, I hope Bao's not stopping out. I hope he wasn't stuck short on his plane ride. <laughs> you know, Bao, every now he's trying to hit everything. He might be in the 3 p.m. rule. I hope he's disciplined while he's gone. <laughs> Guys, questions, questions. This is great, man. What a great webinar. This is almost too good to get up for free. <laughs> Alex, we, I don't think we can post this one. <laughs> I don't think so either, too. Yeah, definitely not. <laughs> So many lessons, so many lessons. Because it's simple. But haven't you noticed within all these lessons that we've been talking about, literally everything from the 40% volume to the to the support and pre-market that Alex is talking about? Haven't you noticed we've said all this about a thousand times over? Is it starting to click yet? It's not like we're inventing new shit daily. <laughs> Stuff has been working for a decade, man, two decades. He's in the Uber home already complaining about the slow driver. Always complaining about something. Man. I was going to say, I think he's only mad at the Uber driver because he's probably stuck short on Cedu. <laughs> that was funny, man. Val has, he's, he's the nicest guy in the world, but sometimes he has a really short uh, patience. Val's like a stick of dynamite. And depending on his mood, the wick is either really short or really long. <laughs> it's like those Acme, those Coyote and Roadrunner things. It's like, <laughs> Oh man, that was a character. Mm. Hey guys, if you have no more questions, we can wrap it up. I Gosh, you watch a new Top Gun? Dude, I have not because Neither have I, bro. Neither have I. I heard it's really I, good. Well, the only reason why I haven't, you know how fucking movie obsessed I am. I, I oh. I'm actually I'm seeing this like super hot Middle Eastern chick, and she just went to Chicago to see her family, and she was like, You better not watch it without me. So I was like, fuck. So, you know, a couple dates in, it's new. I gotta, I, I can't be an asshole this early. Uh, <laughs> I can't do her dirty on like the second date, man. So I gotta, I gotta. I yeah, gotta, I'm, I wanna watch it too, bro. I, I believe it or not, bro, I watched the first Top Gun for the first time ever, like a couple of weeks ago in anticipation. And I've heard from literally every single movie person that Top Gun is the best freaking movie ever. And I can't wait I, to see it. I have, a hey, later, Trent, I have not had all my friends in probably 10 years all text me and be like dude top gun's a perfect movie go see it like like unanimous yeah so someone, someone mentioned in the youtube that the link is not working it's not working because of members only link so you got to be an mic member to watch that video yeah yep 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 gotta get a membership guys Definitely sounds not. Like, sounds like marriage coming soon. <laughs> yeah, the members are. Well, well, let me tell you something though. Let me tell you one thing though. I will say, I've never dated a Middle Eastern chick. She's very old fashioned. She's very conservative, very old school. I was like, if one girl ever locks me down, it's someone like this. Yeah, Middle Eastern girls are great, man. Well, I, I'm marrying Middle Eastern, man. I've dated Latina, white, and and my whole life, and I, I just I can't, bro. I can't. Too Middle Eastern ones are kind of crazy, though, bro. You gotta be careful. Too many bruises, man. I, I just, they they fight, dude. They fight you. What, the Spanish ones? Oh, my God, dude. TVs thrown in my head, remotes, bowling oh, balls. Oh, what kind of what the heck girls are you talking to, bro? Sounds like the girls Bao's getting mixed up with. Puerto Ricans, bro. Puerto Ricans. Bao, Bao has a very special talent of attracting, um, how do I say this in a nice way? 
like a stick of dynamite. Yeah, a stick of dynamite. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you guys think, well, let me let me tell you something. You guys think you guys think Bao is a short fuse? <laughs> oh man. Big girls oh. are short fuse. <laughs> they fight like oh. demons. Listen to me, I love the guy to death, but his stock selection on women is something else. Oh, I'm short. He got, he's got, I think he's running the wrong scanner settings. He's Let me got tell a you scan something. for something else. I'm telling you one thing, bro. If Val gets married ever again, the first day we're going to be at the wedding, we're going to cheer them and we're shorting that wedding. Val's watch list is only hot chicks. Only hot chicks, but they're always trouble day one. Yeah, yeah but dude, not just hot chicks. Like hot chicks that are as deviated as ADRs. He has hot chicks that have a midday PR, that have Jeff Bezos form four by the company midday. It's military contracts, too. Yeah, military contracts. Oh, phase in. two with like really good results. And the max loss does not hit, man. The max oh. loss doesn't hit. And when it hits, it's a blow up. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah. it's not just a blow up. It's like mortgage the house, the car. Yeah. <laughs> expensive locate fee as well. Extremely expensive locate fee. Oh my God. You ever hear those stories of like a guy is like, yeah, man, I had a really good life. I was super wealthy, life, but then I got married. <laughs> That's what we're talking about. That's what about. <laughs> oh, shit, man. He's our brother. We love him to death. But I'll tell you, if he ever gets married again, I'm hitting the short button the first day. During the honeymoon. I don't think he's ever going to get married again. He doesn't well, if he does, I'm shorting that honeymoon ASAP. Oh, we sound like such assholes. Uh, we could be assholes, bro. He calls me fucking Persian every single day. He doesn't even know what my ethnicity is. I know. He calls you he a calls terrorist. calls me Persian, Iraqi, Afghani. He just calls whatever fucking Middle Eastern country comes to his mind. <laughs> the thing that's so funny about that to me is, dude. Well, Persia doesn't even exist anymore, bro. No, dude. The funniest thing about this is the funniest thing. This makes you crack up every time. Bao is so quick to jump. Like if anybody makes one Asian comment, like in the news or anything, but yet he's so racist on Alex. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he's like yeah. you all look the same, etc. It's like, dude, I'm like, I look the same, motherfucker. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny, bro. Well, that's Bao. Bao's the fun. He, if you guys ever get a chance to meet Bao, like get to really, really know him guy is literally the funniest guy in the world like the funniest guy the shit he comes up with he's the funny guy now. his brain works really fast his brain works really fast so he's able to really think of shit it's hilarious no dude he's literally the funniest guy i've ever met we'll just be chilling in a bar i'll see him in the first two minutes and he already has me dying laughing because he like did something funny or noticed something in the bar some dipshit doing something but it's just ridiculous man it's crazy i it's told that a thousand times i'm armenian bro armenian he's like and then what happens is uh, back when I was single, like we would go like to the clubs, whatever. Bao would go up to a girl. He'd look at her be like, you see that guy over there pointing at me? He's like, yeah, that's Kim Kardashian's cousin. For whatever <laughs> reason, that's when he remembers I'm Armenian, when there's girls around and tries to flex. Yep, yep. Otherwise, you're just Lebanese. And Kim Kardashian is not my cousin. Kim Kardashian, man. Oh, man. I mean, that'd be nice. I would like to have like a Rolls Royce for my birthday, but like. Dude, shout out Pete, man. He's dude. He he freaking rep for the white boys like me, man. He made it. He got in the click. Pete dude. Davidson could secure Kim Kardashian, bro. That I could fucking secure anything. <laughs> oh, let me tell you something. But well, you know what it is, bro. I don't know. I can't believe we're talking about fucking Kim Kardashian right now. But like, the thing is, like, uh, he's the ultimate rebound guy. She just went for a rebound, and that just fucking worked. So, bro, she did like a PR like a week ago where she said, "I'm only with him because he's got a massive dick." <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey. It's so funny, dude. You can't make this shit up, man. Oh, geez. Well, this webinar turned funny, but you know what, guys? I think we've given a billion lessons. I think sometimes it's fun to just now just podcast style and joke around. Yeah, like, what this around community is, man. Honestly, we're t- we're kind of just watching Cedu and seeing what these do this late in the day. You know, there's a half an hour left. The short edge is absolutely thrown out the window. Um, this is broke new highs. This is starting to break down a little bit, but it looks like they're kind of saving it. So we'll see what happens. But this is th- grab your popcorn, man. Oh my God, bro! Is today Wednesday? Oh shit, dude, we got Obi Wan. You, oh, bro, I think there's only like one more episode left of Obi Wan. No, 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 don't say that. I think there's only like six episodes, dude. Can anybody confirm that? Oh no, dude! My day was so excited. <laughs> I can't wait. Only six? 
I think they got so much popularity though. They're they're gonna they're gonna continue 100. percent Guys, I'm playing I'm playing Star Wars: The Fallen Order right now. It's a 2019 game I got on Xbox. It's so much freaking fun, dude. You guys got to get it. See how these things fail at whole and half dollar numbers, man. I couldn't even make it to four. You see, this 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 is where Bow would have been short on the on the front side, a hundred thousand percent. If he didn't touch this and he saw this late day, guess where Bow would have scaled three ninety two to four ten. See guys, you see that this is a this is a lesson on front side and using whole and half dollar marks. I don't recommend it when you're a new short seller, but if you are new, that is one of the guides where if you are trying to cherry pick tops, I just don't recommend it. But um, that, yeah, see how it didn't make it to four, and now it's kind of stuffing a little bit. Dude, Calcasters, let's go! Yeah, he's ugly as hell, but he's got that orange hair, so he's a cool player. But he's good with the fours. That's uh that's uh the main character of Fallen Order. Oh. He's like the ugliest character ever, man. But he's he's good at, he's good with the force. He's your protagonist. He's good with the force. Oh, he's good. Motherfucker, this guy. <laughs> he's good with the force. <laughs> Yo. Hole and half dollar. Nice, nice. Hole and half dollar areas, baby. Let's go. CMRA. Nice, Steven. Way to represent the hole and half dollar marks on the way up, buddy. And also using the previous support. So, like if you guys can see um cm cmra will pull it up as you guys can see this is another bow classic favorite oh, hold on let me expand this <clears throat> so what we teach every single day guys when you set up so this is the previous top what do you think that is when it comes back up that's a huge resistance point so when you combine that you know when you're shorting at this area that's already proven that it fails there and you combine a whole and half dollar number like four which is really key for psychological price targets um, you get unwinds like that. And, you know, obviously this late in the day, like, like that's up to you, you know, you can break rules a little bit, but like, I mean, proof is in the pudding, right? Like here's the resistance, here's the whole not of dollar. That's a coupling factor. And that's why you usually uh, get a nice, um, if not a nice quick wash, you know, you can get a nice unwind actually, but there's your quick wash. Then it retests again, fails. And then you get kind of an unwind a little bit. We'll see what it does here, but um, man, so many freaking lessons today, bro. Coin 13 minute green candles in a row. Yeah, that's coins just going to literally follow BTC and then BTC is just going to follow the stock market. So right now, guys, the leader is the S&P 500, then it's BTC and then it's like stocks like coin, right? Or GBTC or things like that. Um, what else, Alex? Is there anything? Oh, Beto. Beto, you know, Beto as well. In fact, I think my buddy texted me the other day. He's like, the best way to short Bitcoin is to just do options on Beto, I think. Yeah, that could work. Yeah, I think that's probably the best way. And, you know, because like I wouldn't, man, I just don't trust crypto enough to throw a bunch of money into an exchange and then hold it on an exchange, whether you're long or short. So probably go the stock route if you want to buy or short. I don't know. I, I don't know, guys. That's up to you. I'm not a fuck crypto. <laughs> GBTC got slaughtered. I think we could keep this webinar short and sweet, Tosh. Maybe, you Good, know, let's, yeah, let's wrap it up. Maybe, maybe we just even give it away, bro, because I feel like. People aren't even going to watch it. So, you know, maybe we'll do a 24 hours. Let's leave this up for that's 24 hours publicly. Yep. And that's then we'll take it down in 24 hours. That's up to you, brother. Whatever you want to do. I think, I think you're right. I think that while there was unbelievable lessons today, while, you know, a lot well, of this content. losing money, bro. I just feel bad, dude. People are losing <clears throat> money in this market, bro. I just really, really feel fucking bad. Dude, fucking everyone I know is crying over some type of investment they've made. Every single person I know, whether it's, dude, I, my dad's fucking crying on what he could have gotten three months ago in real estate, which he's trying to unload a townhouse and then a flip house right now. He's like practically crying because he could have made probably 600 grand more in the deal. My best friend's stock portfolio is tanking through the floor. I got another guy in crypto. Everybody's hurting right now, guys. So if, you, if you're feeling a little discouraged right now and you're like, um, you know, we're doomed. <laughs> everybody's feeling it <laughs> so we'll 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 help out as best we can guys truly um i think this is a great webinar man let's definitely wrap it up huh guys after hours is i'll just plug a couple things really quick just so you have information the guys that came in super late uh after hours is where the fun doesn't stop so if you guys want to network in here keep talking um uh, bad B broke a rule today. Okay. We'll talk about him. That's okay. Pay the price. Um, so there's a, there's a ton of things guys in here. That's super fun that you can network and stuff. And like we said, we'll keep reminding you until the sale is over just so everybody has a chance. 
but truly this is the biggest discount of a lifetime we've had, I think ever, but at least in the last two and a half. Yeah, remember years. guys, it's tax deductible. So at the end of the day, you're still going to win. I mean, it's no brainer. There's no way to lose on this guys. There's literally no way to lose. So, um, so yeah, hit me up. If you guys have any questions uh, one more time, two, one, three, four, five, eight, five, nine, nine, seven. If you're not a member, if you're a member guys, just DM me, be patient, please look how many people I'm talking to right now. These are all the last three days and I'm still talking to a lot of these people. So without further ado, guys, I'm going to go get on some calls, help people uh, get started. And uh, we'll, Alex, we'll maybe see you next week or something, man. Probably bro. Later. See you, bud.